Uh, good afternoon everybody. Today is October 6, 2022. I'm just coming out from the Burger King drive through My destination is to uh, Garden City today. Uh, checking out the mall, Roosevelt Field. I am going to be going on Cross Island Parkway South to uh, connecting to Meadowbrook. Either that or I may get off uh, you know, on Northern States afterwards. So this is the the south entrance, the south ramp entrance from Northern Boulevard Bayside, uh, at Bayside. right lane always has traffic because everybody on this right lane um, is going you know, is going to to the LIE either the east or the west and what some of the you know what some few drivers do is that they will drive all the way up um, to the beginning or uh, well, to the to the exit and then cut cut in and that's what these people in the middle lane are doing and people that's on the left lane they are usually going down to uh, either Grand Central or the Union Turnpike or straight down to uh, to the Bell Parkway on the front did they were in the middle lane and they were just cut right right in to the right lane exiting because there's always there's always gaps in between the cars so I'm heading to uh, exiting on 30e getting onto Long Island Expressway hopefully there's no traffic during the middle of the day Right is Douglaston. I made a video about, I think, was it last month? Exploring uh, Douglaston Plaza. There used to be, uh, you know, Macy's used to be there, uh, Odell's used to be there, um, what else? And Toys R Us used to be there. But now, only uh, a supermarket and Ramadi's and T-Mobile and a few other smaller stores are there. So all the anchor stores left. Possibly because the the owner probably you know, probably want to develop that land because it's a pretty significant uh, large piece of land to develop. You could probably knock down the you could probably knock down the entire plaza and build uh, hundreds of condo units. these type of uh, large developments there's usually a lot of resistance from the local residents
far left lane it's gonna turn to an HOV lane and usually with this heavy traffic during rush hour the HOV lane is the faster alternative because the, the second, third and the fourth lane are just going to be like parking lots the cars doesn't move much during rush hour and if you have more than one passenger uh, most people usually stick to the HOV lane so if you see the HOV lane sign up front it begins on you know, be after exit 33 between you know, HOV lane for you know buses and uh, carpool owning and also energy efficient cars and I believe motorcycles too but getting on the HOV lane it's an honor policy there's a lot of times you know you don't get caught if there's no cops around because pretty often you know you see a lot of cars with only one, you know, with only a driver and no other passengers in the HOV lane. If anybody remember this, but about 20 25 years ago, uh, the Line Expressway has rows of trees in the middle on both sides where the HOV lanes are currently at. So, about 20 25 years ago, uh, you know, there were plans to make the HOV lane, and what they did was that they plowed down all the trees in the middle of the divider and then turn two HOV lanes, one lane on the east, one lane on the west. And that project took many, many, many years to, uh, to finish. years ago they also put up walls on the on the right hand side of the expressways so now there are concrete walls on both sides and the reason they did that was because cars that was traveling on the Long Island expressway were getting too shaky during uh, you know when there when there's a lot of wind so in order for to prevent that and also to reduce you know uh, chances of accidents they put up the walls on both sides so you know the cars won't be you know shaking that much and of course it also helps uh, you know with each person handling you know, driving the car because without those walls uh, it gets very windy I think it was the same project uh, as putting up the HOV lanes. So right in front of me is uh, looks like it's a Subaru uh, delivery truck. A lot of Subarus on this on this truck. Now I believe that there is still a car shortage in all the dealerships. You know, a lot of the dealerships they only get you know one or two cars a week for for certain models, and sometimes you may. You know, a person may put a $500 damn reserve on it and they don't get the car until a month or two later or whenever the next delivery comes in. Right now I'm 
on the LIE, Long Island Expressway, 495 heading east. I got on at uh, exit 3030, and I'm gonna head out, head out at exit 38, um, which is the Meadow, the Meadow Brook Parkway. Is it the Meadow Brook Parkway or Northern State? Oh, I think it's, it's called the Northern State Parkway exit, but the Northern State connects to the Meadow Brook. And if you just stay on Long Island Expressway, it goes all the way out east of Long Island until you hit uh, until you hit Riverhead. And right at the end of the highway is Tango Outlet Mall at uh, exit 72, 73. Uh, so exit 38 is Northern Parkway East. Exit 38 is a very popular exit because it connects to uh, to the Meadowbrook Parkway south and it goes to uh, Jones Beach and all the other beaches down on the south shore. Not just Jones Beach, but it all goes to, goes to uh, also goes to Long Beach. Uh, uh, what's the other beaches? That's east of Jones Beach, Robert Moses, and any any. Any beaches that's on the South Shore, you could get on. You could get on from Meadowbrook Parkway. It also connects to uh, to the Museum Road, to, to uh, the Aviation, the Cradle of Aviation, the Children's Science Museum, and then also to uh, the Nassau County. I mean, not the Nassau County, then um, the Coliseum. And also to Hofstra University. So the Meadowbrook Parkway is um, is a very it's a very uh, busy um, parkway, and there's always usually a lot of traffic. So Meadowbrook Parkway goes from north to south of Long Island. Park getting off this exit is trying to change lanes. Because if you stay on to the left lane, you'll continue to Northern State, you'll continue to uh, Northern State Parkway. And if you want to go to Meadowbrook, you have to change to the right lane. And if you want to get off at Glen Cove Road or, um, or the other road, you have to ch also change you know, to the farthest right lane. Sometimes I don't get off at the Meadowbrook Parkway exit, the M1E or M1W, or from Old Country Road, because there's often a lot of traffic coming out from that exit, because that's the that's the more exit. So a lot of times I usually get off at Glen Cove Road, 
and go down locally and then and then uh, get onto Old Country Road. north on Glen Cove Road you eventually hit Glen Cove <laughs> and that's the reason why it's named Glen Cove Road or Carl Place because Miniola is definitely to the to the right and then I know Carl Place is to the left of me but I'm not sure where the divider is and then Garden City it's, is uh, south of Old Country Road The reason why a lot of people love to live in Garden City is because their lot size are very, they're pretty decent size. The 60 by 100 lots, uh, a lot of space, a lot of fresh air, a lot of greeneries. It looks very suburban. There's no fences in the front of the properties. I think you need to get special permits for them. They may not even be allowed uh, for, for your side yard either. You have to get special permits on those. So they don't like, you know, just from the aesthetic looks of Garden City, the, the village doesn't like any fences. Alright, so I am going to end my video here. Um, if you like this video, please like, subscribe, comment below. If there's any place you want me to visit, please tell me. Um, once I make a left turn here, I'll be at the back of the mall at Stewart Avenue. Then I'll go through from the back to avoid all, this, all the traffic in the front. Alright, I'll see you in the, in the next video.